During the Vietnam War, Jean Chip Tatum joined the U.S. Air Force to avoid dangerous combat in Vietnam. He was promised a job as an air traffic controller, so assumed he'd be stationed at safe air bases to work in air traffic control towers. Tatum was shocked to learn the Air Force also had combat air traffic controllers who worked alongside ground combat forces. He was assigned to special forces in Thailand and became part of a top-secret mission into Cambodia called Operation Red Rock. American President Richard Nixon was desperate to win the war in Vietnam. A huge problem was that Vietnamese took advantage of the neutral Cambodia and set up camps along the border from where they executed attacks. American forces with air support sometimes briefly and legally crossed the border in hot pursuit. This was officially denounced by the Cambodian government, although they privately told the Americans they didn't mind so long as Cambodians were not killed. The small Cambodian army dared not attempt to expel the large Vietnamese force, while their generals accepted bribes from the Vietnamese to allow shipments of weapons and supplies from a Cambodian seaport. The Americans placed great pressure on the Cambodian government, led by Lan Nol, to send forces to expel the Vietnamese and promised massive aid and air support. But Cambodians didn't want to join the bloody war. A top secret plan called Operation Red Rock was devised in the White House to send 13 American commandos dressed as Vietnamese sappers along with some Vietnamese mercenaries to attack Cambodia's main air base. The air base was mostly unguarded since there was no reason for anyone to attack the base. The American team parachuted in and conducted a successful yet messy raid on the night of January 21, 1971 that destroyed a few dozen older military aircraft and an ammo dump. The U.S. military quickly released details of a dastardly raid by Vietnamese communists that convinced the Cambodian government to enter the war on the American side. The Cambodian army sent units east to attack the battle-hardened Vietnamese army and were decimated. This led to a wider war and political turmoil that eventually destroyed Cambodia. This top-secret American attack on Cambodia was so politically dangerous that President Nixon and his staff thought it best that no one survived. The CIA had hired local operatives to drive the commando team's escape truck who attempted to kill them and failed. The team called for a rescue helicopter, but were fired upon and bombed by the U.S. Air Force. The team was forced to walk and fight its way back to American lines, and only two Americans made it out of Cambodia alive. They were treated as secret heroes, but told the operation must remain secret for 25 years. Chip Tatum was one of the two survivors, and continued to work with the CIA in operations around the world that sometimes involved serious criminal activities. He eventually angered some in power, so was sent to prison for 11 months for embezzlement. The CIA had forgot about Red Rock, so after 25 years passed, Tatum authored a book about that operation. He discusses his career in a two-hour interview linked in the description. Here are clips about Red Rock. The reason uh, it was decided to do this was Lon Nol, the CIA-placed uh, premier of Cambodia at the time, was still fence-setting. He just wouldn't get in a heavy offensive posture against uh, the Chinese-led uh, armies of North Vietnam. Uh, he was sitting on the fence, so we decided if we went in as uh, North Vietnamese sappers and totally destroyed the assets on the airport, uh, which were primarily supplied by the United States anyhow, uh, they were our aircraft that we'd given him. There were some French aircraft on, on the tarmac, but not many. Uh, if we would totally destroy those assets, it would make him realize that uh, the North Vietnamese communists were actually coming in after his country now. And he'd get off the fence and ask us for help. Boy, it worked, too. 
Well, you said uh, we decided. Uh, you mean uh, people in Washington D.C. decided? Nixon, 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 uh, Nixon himself. This was actually Dr. Kissinger's plan. So Dr. Kissinger came up with this idea. Came up. Nixon with approved it. He approved it with the statement after after uh, thorough thought that, uh, and this was debriefed to me by uh, Mr. Colby that no one can ever know. No one can ever know what we've done to our allies. Otherwise we wouldn't be trusted anywhere in the world. And was that the case? That was the case. No one could ever know what we had done. And I was, it, we, when we were debriefed, we were debriefed with a 25 year classification period. That we well, you were debriefed years, what, years later? Uh, I was debriefed uh, when I came out of the coma in, ho in the hospital in 1971. Okay. Uh, now this is, uh, what year now again, going back to the... 1971. When you when you made the drop and you were debriefed, uh, in Jan that's January of seventy one, and then I was debriefed in uh, June of seventy one. Okay, okay. So uh, you you made the drop with the sappers, right? Made made the drop. It was a night jump uh, out of out of a C a C one thirty night drop in, uh, just south of town. We made our way into Phnom Penh. Uh, we rendezvoused with our transportation. Our transportation was. Uh, provided by Monton Yards. And after the chopper was inbound to us, we had decided that, uh, well, here, here comes our aircraft, but they were contacted over radio. Uh, it was a rescue aircraft, a King aircraft coming in. They were contacted that there were actually sappers had taken over Team Red Rocket. Remember, we were dressed as sappers. We didn't have any U.S. uniforms. If we had been caught in country, we'd been prosecuted as spies because that's against all international law. So here we were, dressed in sappers in a foreign country, talking to these aircraft. I was I was controlling them down um, as, as a combat controller. That's my job, bringing them into the LZ because it was a very small area. Uh, bringing them in, uh, knowing that we we're going to leave. I mean, my heart was pumping. The adrenaline was flowing. I was tired. I was hungry. But man, we're getting out of here. And uh, all of a sudden, the door guns on the on the jolly let loose. Uh, I was debrief when we were when I was debriefed by Bill Colby. He said the colonel had called them and said that uh, Team Red Rock had been overcome. It's actually sappers and protect yourselves. And they saw sappers. Remember, this is the man who runs the intelligence entity for Southeast Asia telling him this. So they fired. And how many did you lose there? Two. And uh, how did how did what? I mean, they didn't come in and clean. So you're down to eleven now. Down to eleven. Uh, they they actually had called in we lost two men and uh but we had to return fire on the aircraft shooting shooting out uh, the rear of the aircraft rather than shooting at the pilots because we didn't want to hurt our own guys you know we did the pilot did the plane go down no no it, it we shot look from the smoke and everything it looked like maybe some hydraulics were shot out on it or something we, we weren't sure at any rate they uh they left the area but they called in some air support to drop to drop on that uh, lz Bombs, drop uh, napalms on it. Uh huh. So we got out, we got out of the area quick, and as we were exiting, uh, the sky lit up in the LC. But uh, uh, until you got out, you'd lost two men. Then you had to lost leave them behind. Men. Had to leave them behind using the slap packs so that they'd never be identified. Right. Okay. So there's eleven out. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you decide to do then? Well, we decided we were we would be best to try to make it across country ourselves. Trust no one, <laughs> and that's. The Tatum spoke highly of William Colby, who oversaw CIA activities in Vietnam and later became CIA director. Colby became a friend who told him that Nixon feared the world would learn about Red Rock, so General Alexander Haig assured him no witnesses would survive. Colby engaged in sinister operations because he was loyal to the United States government, but was religious and had strong principles. Just after the Vietnam War disaster, an activist Congress was elected who investigated the CIA and Pentagon activities around the world. Colby testified before congressional committees 56 times and explained that Congress had never prohibited dirty operations. CIA and the United States government is in compliance with the decision made by the Congress as to how this question should be answered. The Congress had an opportunity to require more than it did. It did not. It decided not to. And in the course of its decisions, in the course of the laws adopted by the Congress, it clearly left a field for this activity. Colby made more enemies and friends in the deep state. When Congress asked him a question, he gave an honest answer. The intel guys were angry as they thought it was his duty to lie. 
Congress asked Colby to investigate past dubious CIA operations and share his findings. This resulted in a 1975 public release of official documents about CIA involvement with the Mafia and assassinations that became known as the CIA's Family Jewels, which are linked in the description. This angered many, so President Gerald Ford fired Colby for his honesty. He retired from the CIA, but later died in a suspicious drowning accident. With respect to uh, the, the possible missteps that the CIA may have taken in the past, uh, the first that they were undertaken in the belief that they fell within the agency's charter to collect foreign intelligence or to protect intelligence sources and methods. Second, the agency has held and adhered to the principle that its responsibilities lie in the field of foreign intelligence and not domestic intelligence and that any of the above activities were believed to, be, to have been related to foreign intelligence. And third, that any missteps by CIA were few and far between, have been corrected, and in no way justify the outcry which has been raised against CIA. Mm -hmm.